Hello, everyone. Welcome back to JSA TV and JSA Podcast. We are, we are covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations live here from DCD, Virginia, a very, very packed DCD, Virginia in Leesburg. I am here with one of the leaders in digital infrastructure, Danielle Rossi uh, with Train. Let me get your title right. Global Director of Mission Critical Cooling for yes. Train. Welcome. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you are quite busy at this conference, <laughs> as you seem to always be at all of these conferences. So thank you for taking the time. And I wanted to dive into some of the conversations that you've been having here at DCD Virginia. So first of all, you're about to run off to the a panel um, addressing how the industry can better manage customer cooling requirements over the next five years. So can you give us just a little, uh, a little uh, insight into your answer to that challenge? Yeah, I, I think in the next five years, we're going to see some really big changes with between chip density changes, um, climate changes. Uh, for example, London last year had a at what was considered a 50 year high and they almost hit it again this year. So there's a lot of different things that are, are going to be adjusting um, from requirements wise. So mm -hmm. I think that in the next five years, there needs to be some planning associated with that, whether it's planning around what your load's going to be or planning around what your, your location. There's a few different ways that I think that the consulting engineers, the customers, there needs to be more transparency and then with the vendors. Mm -hmm. So everybody can be on the same page and supplying what you need, not necessarily in the next year, but in the next five, 10 years. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, and, and Train also hosted one of the lunches yesterday, which I hear was super popular and you guys had to bring in extra tables for it and everything. It was a packed house. Um, so that was on sustainability and cooling. Yeah. So what was one key takeaway from that? Um, I think part of the, the thing people talk about sustainability a lot and they, they, it's, you know, they talk about carbon offsets and, and, and some of the more simple ways of doing that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of elements to sustainability that aren't necessarily noted on. So talking about circular materials, talk about um, less using less transportation and redesigning products. We talk about the, you know, the impact of footprint so that mm -hmm. the real estate and, and how much land is being used. So Sustainability just doesn't necessarily mean, oh, this is a better efficient unit. It could also mean the entire process around making the unit, what's included as far as the, the facility it's going into. A lot of aspects of it to take into account. And I think that more people need to be looking holistically than just at one component. Yeah, yeah, I love that. The holistic look, and you know, we're big on that at JSA as well. So that you're speaking our language. Thank you. Um, and, you know, I, I was mentioning before, we see each other at conferences a lot. You travel the world seemingly talking about <laughs> sustainability and cooling and all things data center industry. So um, how are you feeling just in general about kind of where we're at on the topic of sustainability in this industry and, and what needs to happen next year in that area? Um, yeah, I can't believe this is the first time we're meeting in the U.S. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, no, the, there's big changes happening in legislation, particularly in Europe. For example, um, some countries like Germany just last month or September came out mm -hmm. with uh, new legislation around heat reuse and the design and build of data centers in the next in the next like up until 2030, I think there's a lot of different regulations happening. And I think that there's going to be more in intensive focus, whether it's the carrot or the stick. So whether you have legislation where you might have a, you know, you have a penalty if you're not, if you're using too much power or on the other side where you'll get some type of incentive if you're being really efficient or you're, you're trying to um, use renewables, things like that. Um, I think that there's going to be some more changes going forward like that. And there's mm -hmm. going to be more focus on things like the heat reuse and, and, um, more focus on things outside of just standard PUE, like mm -hmm. WUE, what's your water usage? How can we redesign and retrofit, to, you know, the existing facilities? So I think there's going to be a little bit more of that. I think the, the legislation is going to push it to that direction. Yeah, we're yeah. hearing so much about the legislation coming, you know. Strict, spin, some of so, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, definitely, you know, a conversation that we will continue to have yeah. uh, and, and ramp up and broaden even more over the next uh, few years here. So uh, thank you so much for, for joining me yeah. here in the state, yeah. Danielle. <laughs> um, and thank you, viewers, for tuning in to JSA TV Live from DCD, Virginia. Happy networking.